welcome gopi uh, just a quick word about gopi uh, gopi is a, a founder and ceo of mailin foundry uh, and also was the group uh, cto uh, and innovation head for tata group uh, probably the best person to start talking about innovation in the social sector he's been a mentor for us as well for the last couple of months and it's been a pleasure to have him on board uh, working with us on defining some of the social problems that we are working on uh, gopi over to you uh, gopi you seem to be on mute Sorry about that. Is my presentation visible, Priya? Yes, it is. Yes. Fantastic. So thanks. Uh, such a wonderful panel, and it's a privilege to be following uh, this uh, panel. I'll uh, start off where uh, KK left it off. Uh, he aptly described that uh, the starting place uh, for defining scale and achieving scale is a sharply defined set of uh, problems. So uh, happy to um, dive into that to some extent. And uh, uh, this I will dive in, of course, from the social impact standpoint, and that will be the thinking. While some of the areas uh, might look uh, uh, very large uh, to be solved uh, in the social impact sector, I will uh, play out how it can be done and what are the aspects that need to be looked at. I'm a strong believer that uh, in order for a region to grow, a nation to grow and uh, be equally contributing to the global uh, needs, uh, one of the uh, key elements and the starting part is energy. I do think that in India, we have made significant uh, progress over the last few years. We need to make uh, significant more progress. So as we speak, uh, I'm sitting in a room with a generator running uh, in the subdivision because the power is out. And uh, as we speak, uh, government might be talking about a surplus uh, power. Uh, so there is a disconnect. Uh, today, we have 400 gigawatts of install capacity, which is up from 200 gigawatts uh, when I first started talking about it, but we need to be at least at 800 gigawatts, at which point we'll still be on a per capita basis or any other way of looking at it, uh, dragging the world average down. And that's a good thing. We don't want to uh, be growing our power generation in the same way that uh, rest of the world has done it. We need to be doing it uh, in a much more planet friendly uh, way. And at the same time, we need to realize that uh, there is no GDP growth or rural sector inclusion, which is going to happen uh, without getting them the basic uh, lifestyle, which doesn't come uh, without the jobs, which do not come without the required amount of energy. Uh, however, uh, the question is, uh, by the way, 800 uh, uh, gigawatts, which is a 400 gigawatt ad, translates to $400 billion over 10 years. So from a sector which is interested in revenues and profit, that might be the way to think about it. But that's not all. You need transmission and distribution to evacuate this power. And that is another $400 billion. So that's about $80 billion of uh, revenues and the corresponding profits, uh, which can be generated in this uh, sector. But then uh, all of these cannot be done um, in the uh, social sector. Uh, so the way to think about it is where can the social sector contribute and if inclusion is the goal, uh, last mile is an area where contributions can happen and smart measurements and uh, aspects of um, bringing in digital like was discussed in the earlier panel need to be thought about. However, I also want to expand the thinking to beyond digital when we think about innovation and when we think about technology. Uh, stopping at digital is comfortable, but it is not adequate. Um, and so if you look at the healthcare center, for example, uh, inclusion of healthcare means that we have to make it accessible. We have to make it, make it accessible in the uh, rural sectors and uh, 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 for women, infant uh, and elderly care. In terms of the healthcare spend in India today, it is 3.6% uh, of GDP. Uh, whereas um, my recommendation is that we need to grow it to at least 5% of uh, GDP. Uh, so um, this growth while the GDP itself uh, grows. Uh, so the uh, impact will come by making healthcare based on 
sophistication of analysis so simplicity of measurement sophistication of analysis and providing the warmth of care so here again um, there is an aspect which is digital but there is an aspect which are sensors there is an aspect which will uh, ensure that you don't need ct and mr and uh, those kinds of machines to go into rural sectors very tough that's not the way you will be able to uh, equip the primary and secondary care center so you need to be uh, smart about what kind of center Uh, sensors and as covid has hi highlighted the need for digital education uh, ott education in particular uh, the question remains as to how many people can access it comfortably and how can we make it more inclusive and there are ways and means of doing it even in low bandwidth uh, scenarios and uh, how do we uh, also do it in places where uh, the access to even screens is uh, tough so that's another area of uh, discussion uh, water is a tough problem we are pretty much a water scarce country already um, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the entire nation uh, unless we connect all the sources of water to all the demand in a much better way we are already water scarce uh, but in the future even if we connect all the sources of water to all the sources of demand we will not have sufficient water um, we have to double the sewer treatment facility we have to double usable water in a manner which is environmentally conducive also uh, so we cannot put our heads in the uh, sand and expect that uh, just by stating things like desalination and so on we are going to solve the problem a desalination uh, might be a solution but then you have to put in an effort to figure out what you will do with the brine um, and how we will protect the uh, sea life when you uh, uh, dispose of the brine in the waters uh, near the uh, shore there are many more uh, issues associated with it uh, many times when you hear solutions which are simple like getting water from the atmosphere and so on you need to dig deep because when you hear simple solutions for tough problems uh, that's what uh, they will end up being they will not be complete and that's why they have not picked up scale that we are talking about uh, today and in order to do that we need to do our own r&d we are an abysmal 2% of gdp in terms of uh, r&d as a few years ago the current number and i didn't put it here because uh, of the um, sudden change in the number is at 1% of uh, gdp uh, including government and uh, private sector and uh, so you can imagine if i said 2% was low uh, 1% is definitely needing improvement for us to solve a problem uh, or problems of indian kind uh, we need to at least double there as well so as you can see the theme is 2x everything has to be 2x and it has to be done differently it has to be reimagined like the previous panel sharad uh, talked about um we need to train 500 million workers to contribute hands on in various of uh, these uh, problem areas and create those uh, jobs and that's how we are going to create livelihoods and lifestyles which uh, matter and we need to revamp, revamp government schools to be more experiential uh, and make people more ready to take on challenges uh, and uh, use uh, technologies again which will make the difference food is another area we have to reduce food wastage and today in the urban sector where we cannot afford to have a 2200 kilo calorie diet everybody is eating more than that um, in the in certain portions of the uh, population whereas in the rural sector where we need a 2200 kilo calorie diet we don't even have an 1800 kilo calorie diet uh, so how do we get there how do we double the agricultural yield today our yield is abysmally low again again it's a 2x uh, problem um, and uh, that will answer the question the prime minister posed in terms of income but we need to do it without robbing the soil of its own uh, future which has happened uh, in the past so these are all problems which can be solved by technology but its technology is not the silver uh, bullet so um when we look at uh, technology one way to look at it is uh, i'm showing you how i do it uh, this is uh, my birth chart if you would i've used this for a good 25 years and be it a discussion on profitable companies or be it a discussion on ngo kind of companies and social enterprises can span both uh, everyone needs to have a view of something equivalent of this there are geopolitical trends which i start with uh, pandemic 
migrant dynamics climate change terrorism uh, micro capitalism oil prices emerging markets these are all always in the news um, the uh, priority in the news might change but this will drive the needs um, and then there are consumer trends and social trends which are also part which is social distancing uh, as an example which is new but premiumization and by the way if you think rural sectors do not require premiumization we'll have to think again uh, the fact that we need uh, to produce for the greater masses doesn't mean that they will accept uh, lower uh, quality or for that matter they don't want customization health and wellness digitization growing population uh, covid has highlighted that again women decision makers uh, these are all things which will drive uh, the kind of needs uh, in the near future so you see also the needs our current needs and emerging needs we need to have a view of both uh, so if it is today mobility tomorrow it's virtual presence it doesn't matter urban rural connected rural consumers last panel talked about it it's not just the urban consumer but the rural consumers are connected in low bandwidth uh, and tomorrow we need connected rural things even if we want to enable uh, the right treatment of uh, straw which is being generated uh, through agriculture vernacular media it is uh, arrogant to think that uh, one language and uh, uh, one uh, uh, foreign language will cover the needs of uh, the media for the entire country i think it is upon us to look at vernacular media not only that we need to take care of differently able people uh, we need to include how they will be able to uh, look at media if everything is going online um, and uh, if you can cannot see then there is uh hearing which is possible uh but we need to be thinking in those uh, manner and early health will give way to predicting and preventing uh, early health is being able to diagnose and cure but i think even with covid it is the ability to predict and uh, prevent who is more susceptible and um, also early screening is the success uh, of many countries which have done it uh, well only then once we understand this does uh, technology come in uh, and i would strongly recommend all the folks who are uh, listening in uh, now and later to think about technology beyond uh, digital digital also think about it as computing and uh, think about the details uh, but include biology and materials in all your thinking uh, nobody can develop innovation and technology without thinking about biology i am not a biologist uh, but if i don't understand genomics i don't understand microbiomics transcriptomics i am not going to be able to think through solutions for problems such as covid i will play at the surface and around the surface and uh, be happy with that but we will not solve the uh, problem uh, so the, the, i'm not intending to dive into the technology area but very quickly i wanted to talk about one area which is ai uh, priya did want me to spend some time on it i'll spend uh, five minutes on it before opening up for questions um, artificial intelligence is good uh, but it can be used in all kinds of manner so the key uh, input should be that uh, as social impact entrepreneurs you need to look at and we need to look at ai for good uh, we need to realize that ai is not human intelligence human intelligence is very complex um, iq eq emotional quotient the experiential learning which is hand quotient which is my terminology and what the environment is giving to you in terms of contributing bacteria in your gut in your skin in every cavity that you have and you have intelligence from that as well it is not possible to replicate today in ai what you're trying to do is pick one area which is the neural uh, neural understanding of our nervous system and uh, ma mathematically reproduce it um so what we are doing is uh, looking at the uh, neuron understanding that it performs really simple computation uh, which is multiplication aggregation uh, by adding biases which is addition and then um, you know, using a non linearity uh, which are all very simple mathematical operations so the strength of our own biological neur neural network comes from its massive interconnectivity and so also of the mathematical neural networks and neural networks 
is only one of the many uh, AI techniques, but it is the reason why everybody is talking about AI today. Uh, and there is a development which is a little bit new in addition to the computational power, uh, which is the ability to throw anything at a neural network because of uh, small changes in the algorithm. So previously, if we had images and videos, uh, we would uh, do things like discrete cosine transform and use only a limited set of uh, coefficients if you would to represent the image, losing much in the process. But today we can throw the whole image, whole video um, with the audio into the neural network and uh, expect an outcome of the kind that we seek. Uh, so there is a lot which can be done uh, by using neural networks for sensor fusion when you have uh, multiple sensors. Sensor doesn't have to be a, an electronic sensor. Sensor can be somebody uh, going and doing a survey in a rural sector. Uh, looking at fault patterns and mapping patterns, automation of analysis that you already know how to do, but it takes a long time. Uh, implementing rules which some expert knows in his head, but bringing it out and implementing it in a manner which can scale. Uh, image analysis, natural language processing, voice recognition, and image recognition. These are all things which have made significant progress in the recent years. And the applications are many and they apply to social sector. In health and wellness, uh, we can really go sophisticated on the sensing uh, and go uh, very low cost on the sensing. We go very miniaturized on the sensing because you can go uh, even more sophisticated on the analysis using AI. In agricultural spraying, you can recognize what kind of spraying, how much spraying in which area based on the crop, uh, the images of the crop. You can determine what kind of uh, learning uh, uh, syllabus should be allocated to individuals and based on their progress, what kind of changes need to be made. You can stream in uh, low bandwidth conditions. You can observe and recommend uh, ideas for driver safeties in ex uh, as an example for truck driver safety. And you can pro process and uh, automate anything which is knowledge based to some extent. And for example, legal process automation, which might be very scary in the rural uh, sector can be automated. I'll end with this. Uh, you might be curious to know if you're a social enterprise, uh, enterprise how do you uh, look at an AI strategy? The questions to ask yourself are the following. Uh, number one is we need to make sure that we're thinking about AI ethics. We're thinking about data privacy and we're thinking about AI for good um, all the way. Uh, so it's not that just the objective and outcome is good, but all the way, including data privacy. Key to AI and 80% of the work goes into the data. So what data does the social enterprise have or can generate? Uh, for example, uh, there is data available with the police, uh, which can be used uh, for many applications. Uh, do you have access to that? Can you get access to that? Uh, if not, can we work with the regulators to get access to that? What manual decisions uh, today take significant government time, which makes uh, things stuck, or an expert's time so that we can automate? Are there aspects of intelligence that can be captured and uh, used uh, by voice, sound, image, or video? Because that's where the greatest progress of AI has been. And you can uh, do scale operations by deploying sensors, which can look at this and automate uh, the recognizing actions that you want to identify uh, without a problem. But keep in mind privacy is of concern. Uh, can you fuse sensors? Can you eliminate previous techniques? Do not try to only automate existing techniques because that is uh, a starting point. Really what you need to be look at, uh, looking at is, given that uh, this is a new game, like Sharad said, uh, the new players should be thinking about totally different ways of solving the uh, problems. And can you do things at the edge? Uh, edge maintains more privacy, edge maintains more security. And then what can you and what you need to do at the cloud? These are all the things that you can uh, think about about while looking at uh, social problems. I'll end by saying that um, India is a fantastic place to be right now. It's a beautiful country. It is a high energy country. It has great demographics. It has great technology uh, power uh, and uh, the ability to get uh, all of this together and to the next level is for the youth uh, to have the confidence that they can solve the toughest uh, problems. They need to know which are the toughest problems. They need to have access to the best of technology and realize that technology doesn't stop at digital and uh, take all that they have in them and uh, know that they can make a difference. Over to you again, Priya. 
Thank you, Gopi. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have one question that I want to take up and I would love if all the other panelists can also uh, switch on their video because I thought this was a very interesting question and uh, we could end with, and the right question to end with. The question is, what is your vision to eradicate poverty in India? What are some of the most important systemic changes and collaborations needed? What are your thoughts on minimum income? How do you think that the basic dignity of each person, roti, kapra, makan, be achieved? And I thought it's a great conversation to have uh, on this forum and hearing from all of you. So Shara then Vineet, if you can also, and I think Arun is also here. So if all of you can switch on your video and uh, we can take quick two minutes round robin, go and, and uh, what are your big ideas on how do we eradicate poverty in India? We'll start with Gopi. Sure, sure, uh, Priya. Um, so I have a bias. I think that you, uh, the way to do this is by creating jobs, um, by making uh, people enabled uh, to solve their own problems. Now, job creation can happen only if you are in an ecosystem where is where there is um, factories, where there is agricultural uh, outcomes, um, and those are in turn enabled by having the right public infrastructure. That public infrastructure is trip uh, very critically driven by energy. So I think that the first step is uh, working with the government to get the right uh, levels of uh, uh, power uh, in order to power the rest of the uh, needs. And then the private sector and social enterprises can come together to solve the rest of the problems. Uh, uh, should I go to Arvind? Yeah, Priya, my brief uh, thing on that is I think we have to uh, ensure that there is a, uh, a good public social security net around people who have just moved out of poverty or are just below the poverty line. So that they and, and which are those areas that they need, they're spending the most on health. Uh, of course, jobs, nobody will debate that. But so beyond that, where is the, where is the expenditure, which is health, uh, education, and if we can give them a social security uh, network, uh, through intervent direct interventions or better education, more empowerment, so that they they once they cross the poverty line, become aspirational in India, they stay there and keep going upwards. There are no unwanted costs in health or better education. They don't have pressure to go, uh, send their kids to private schools. So I think um, which all interventions we can do, whether that's more uh, uh, digital technology or just you know um, uh, better education infrastructure or health infrastructure, we'll have to think very holistically. And that's how you move more people from the below poverty line into our poverty line and make them stay there. Sharad? You know, it's a wonderful question for which I don't have an answer. <laughs> I am myself looking for the answer. I'm searching and I am myself in a beginner's mind learning about this. So I don't know the answer. All I know is that, you know, there is something special about us as Indians which is that each one of us is willing to invest in education, right? I mean, even at the, everybody believes education is a great investment. We got to make this come to life. You know, everybody want, we have the, we are the only culture in the world where health is as much about wellness as it about, as it is about illness. So if we can harness that, the only way to have cost effective health system in India is to harness wellness right and and we are we are exporting this to the rest of the world we have potential to do this much better than before and ultimately everybody in india is willing to be an entrepreneur and this is where i think we need a new concept we need to equip our smallest entrepreneur with what i like to think of it as zero friction entrepreneurship we must be able to establish zero friction right today the friction of being an entrepreneur is very very high and I think there is some talk in the government to make ease of doing business better. But we need a game-changing approach here. We don't need to improve 10 points, 20 points. We need to improve 100 points here. And so that requires rethinking the paradigm completely. And then we will unleash the energy of every India. And that is how I think we'll go forward. I am still learning the answer. I, I, if people have good suggestions on this, I am all ears. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Gopi, Arvind, and Sharad. And I think Vineet is probably there on mute as well. So thank you to all the panelists. And what an amazing closing session for us at the Social Innovation Track. 
and to all the attendees thank you so much for coming in uh, we would love to follow our, uh, follow on have conversations figure out what are uh, collective actions that we can take so please follow us on our social media and we would love to hear from you uh, bye everybody and thank you so much for being part of the social innovation track at church of 2020 thank you thank, thank you. you thank you